Good evening, it's early evening, it's 4.50pm, nearly 5pm. I'm going to be sharing with you the Mass readings for today. I'll just begin with one or two prayers. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom his love commits me here, Ever this day be at my side, to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. Holy Michael Archangel, defend me in this day of battle. Be my safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, I humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust down to hell Satan, and all the wicked evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. I'll just share with you before I begin what the readings are. We are on liturgical readings for Monday 8th of August 2022, 19th week of ordinary time, year 2. First reading will be f taken from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 1. 2 to 5, 24 to 28, and the theme, it was something that looked like the glory of the Lord. Then there will be a Psalm 148, and the response will be, your glory fills all heaven and earth. And the Acclamation is from Psalm 147, 12 and 15. O praise the Lord Jerusalem. He sends out his word to the earth. Or there's another choice. Through the good news God called us to share the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Holy Gospel is read according to Matthew Chapter 17, verses 22 to 27. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. On the fifth of the month, it was the fifth year of exile for King Jehoiachin. The word of the Lord was addressed to the priest Ezekiel, son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans on the bank of the river, river Chiba. There the hand of the Lord came on me. I looked. A stormy wind blew from the north, a great cloud with light around it, a fire from which flashes of lightning darted, and in the centre a sheen like bronze at the heart of the fire. In the centre I saw what seemed four animals. I heard the noise of their wings as they moved, it sounded like rushing water, like the voice of Shaddai, a noise like a storm, like the noise of a camp. When they halted, they folded their wings, and there was a noise above the vault, over their heads, was something that looked like a sapphire. It was shaped like a throne, and high up on this throne was a being that looked like a man. I saw him shine like bronze, and close to and all around him, what seemed his loins upwards was what looked like fire. And from what seemed his loins downwards, I saw what looked like fire and a light all round like a bow in the clouds on rainy days. That is how the surrounding light appeared. 
it was something that looked like the glory of the Lord. I looked and prostrated myself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 148 and the response will be Your glory fills all heaven and earth. Your glory fills all heaven and earth. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all his host. Response. Your glory fills all heaven and earth. Alleluia. All earth's kings and peoples praise him. Earth's princes and rulers, young men and maidens, old men together with children. Response. Your glory fills all heaven and earth. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he alone is exalted. The splendor of his name reaches beyond heaven and earth. Response. Your glory fills all heaven and earth. He exalts the strength of his people. He is the praise of all his saints, of the sons of Israel, of the people to whom he comes close. Response. Your glory fills all heaven and earth. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. O oh, praise the Lord Jerusalem, He sends out His word to the earth. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Through the good news, God called us to share the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. One day, when they were together in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is going to be handed over into the power of men. They will put him to death. And on the third day, he will be raised to life again. And a great sadness came over them. When they reached Capernaum, the collectors of the half shekel came to Peter and said, Does your master not pay the half shekel? Oh yes, he replied and went into the house. But before he could speak, Jesus said, Simon, what is your opinion? From whom do the kings of the earth take toll or tribute? From their sons or from foreigners? And when he replied, From foreigners, Jesus said, Well then, the sons are exempt. However, so as not to offend these people, go to the lake and cast a hook, take the first fish that bites, open its mouth, and there you will find a shekel. Take it and give it to them for me and for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
So the reflection will be from Monday 19th week in Ordinary Time, Matthew 17, verses 22 to 27. The story in today's Gospel reading about the half shekel has been described as one of the more curious stories in the Gospels. The half shekel was a tax that every Jew paid for the upkeep of the temple in Jerusalem. The collectors of this half shekel tax came to Peter to know whether Jesus paid this tax or not. In other words, was Jesus a good Jew? Did he support the temple like every committed Jew? In the conversation Jesus subsequently had with Peter about this tax, Jesus says, the sons are exempt. Jesus was in the process of forming a new family of disciples who would be his brothers and sisters and thereby sons and daughters of God. We all belong to that family on the principle that fathers do not tax their children. Jesus concludes that the members of his new family do not have to pay a tax to God their father. However, even though in principle Jesus' disciples are free from this tax, they should pay it so as not to give unnecessary scandal to those for whom it is important. Jesus is talking here about a deeper freedom, the freedom to renounce one's legitimate freedom out of love for others. This is what St. Paul would call the freedom of the spirit. It is the freedom to love even if that entails renouncing our legitimate entitlements. For Jesus and Paul, loving consideration for others is a higher value than freedom. For us as followers of Jesus, it is love that shapes how we exercise our freedom. The fundamental question for us as Jesus' disciples is not so much as what am I free to do or not do, but how can I serve the other in love, especially the most vulnerable? When we live out of that question, then we reflect something of the freedom of God. Thank you so much for listening. I did not um, do the Bible readings last night. It was so strange. When I finished um, recording all the other um, meditations, I'd planned to do all of the, and I'd written in my book. This tiredness just hit me. And then I remembered that I was supposed to go online and do a Zoom with Marin Arthur, who I've been a member of since more or less the beginning of it, a lot of years ago, 30-odd years ago or something, in, in the 90s anyway. And um, so I was like 10 minutes late for that, and I just listened to, to them. They were talking about ascending the church as a whole, but I feel that they, 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 it, they were formed by in Manchester by a wonderful um, Methodist, Dennis Wrigley, together with a Catholic priest, um, Father Michael. And um, they shared their faith and beliefs with all denominations and formed this organisation. It's still going today. But it's not on the ascent. They, uh, mind you, they're talking of the, the church as a whole because they represent all the denominations or they, they try to have association with all of them, diff- all the different ones, which there are so many. 
and um, I was listening to them talking and sharing and praying and uh, I didn't participate I listened um, but I looking at the church on the whole that I'm talking when I talk of the church it's Jesus's church not our own individual ones the head of the church the Catholic Church is what he he created but all these others branched off but he's still head of his church and they were talking about it ascending but the way my eyes see it I um, saw it descending and I got actually I might read what I got I didn't share it with them I got wisdom for and I'm going to share it because I got this while I was praying and listening to them. I've got to find it. So, yes, I, I don't see the, the church as it is at the moment as ascending anywhere. I, I didn't um, accept... That is the title of the of what they were going to be talking about anyway, but I feel that the church for a long time has been descending. Not yes, the wish and desire is to ascend, go up, you know, spread. But I feel it's going it's being pressured from within the Catholic Church. We're at war with what the Pope is trying to foist on the rest of us and we shouldn't have to be fighting our Pope should we <laughs> but he's trying to take the Latin and the tradition out and 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 to say that, that the sin is not sin when it is sin I'm not, I'm not even gonna name what I'm talking about because I'm sure you know what I mean this is what the Lord gave me in that meeting I'm going to read it for you. Wisdom 4. Maybe one of you could comment. Maybe you'll understand what it is because I don't understand why I received this. I didn't share it. Better than this is childlessness with virtue. For in the memory of virtue is immortality. Because it is known both by God and by men when it is present men imitate it and they long for it when it has gone and throughout all time it marches crowned in triumph victor in the contest for prizes that are undefiled but the prolific brood of the ungodly will be of no use and none of their illegitimate seedlings will strike a deep root or take a firm hold for even if they put forth boughs for a while, standing insecurely, they will be shaken by the wind and by the violence of the winds, they will be uprooted. The branches will be broken off before they come to maturity and their fruit will be useless not ripe enough to eat and good for nothing. For children born of unlawful unions are witnesses of evil against their parents when God examines them. But the righteous man, though he die early, will be at rest for old age is not honoured for length of time, nor measured by number of years. 
but understanding is grey hair for men and a blameless life is ripe old age. There was one who pleased God and was loved by him and while living among sinners he was taken up he was caught up lest evil change his understanding or guile deceive his soul for the fascination of wickedness obscures what is good and roving desire perverts the innocent mind. Being perfected in a short time, he fulfilled long years, for his soul was pleasing to the Lord. Therefore he took him quickly from the midst of wickedness. Yet the people saw and did not understand nor take such a thing to heart that God's grace and mercy are with his elect and he watches over his holy ones the triumph of the righteous the righteous man who has died will condemn the ungodly who are living and youth that is quickly perfected will condemn the prolonged old age of the unrighteous man, for they will see the end of the wise man and will not understand what the Lord purposed for him and for what he kept him safe. They will see and will have contempt for him, but the Lord will laugh them to scorn. After this, they will become dishonoured corpses and an outrage among the dead for ever, because he will dash them speechless to the ground and shake them from the foundations. They will be left utterly dry and barren and they will suffer anguish, and the memory of them will perish. The final judgment. They will come with dread when their sins are reckoned up, and their lawless deeds will convict them to their face. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I received that last night while I was sitting, meditating, praying and listening and um, just watching and waiting on the Lord. But I don't understand except that I believe that it must be something to do with the church as a whole. The whole church, not partitioned and not denominations. But I believe that receiving that is something to do with the condition and state of the church. Not just the Catholic Church, but the whole Church of God. Because there's a battle, a spiritual battle, going on in the churches, plural. Because some have got women priests, which is no. No in the eyes of God, or he would have had lady priests a long time ago in the Jewish nation it would have begun if he wanted women to be priests and Jesus is the the priests priest it as of old in Melchizedek's days so there cannot be women priests but they have got them and then there's all these when I lived in Jamaica they had you couldn't count how many types of churches they had. Could have run to more than 30 something, even more than that. They just kept breaking away and breaking away. That way you can't get the truth. How do you pass the truth down when those who are teaching what they're teaching die? You know, it's, it's impossible to teach the truth if, if it's been cut up into small pieces. Yeah, so there's, 
There's all sorts of problems in all the churches, all of them, including the Catholic Church and the Anglican Church, the Protestant Church. And this shows us that we're in very, very end times. We've entered them and we have no idea when the Father will send Jesus back. But we have to be ready, but we have to be ready for warfare. But how you can be war ready for a spiritual battle if you're all fighting one another? We have enough fights and battles outside of the church to contend with, with people who don't know God. So we have to pray for the church. That's what I'm requesting. You pray for the whole of the church, the Jesus' church, he's head of all of them. But the main one is the Catholic one. It's the only one that he founded. He didn't found all these other denominations. They broke away because they disagreed, just like the German Catholic Church. They want to break away or they want to have their own way, and I'm not even going to title what, what it is because I don't want to break any community rules and regulations and get banned again. I've been banned enough times, so... I have to be careful what I say, but I'm sure you know that, that you listen and follow to the news that, that they talk about, that they want this to be okay. When We're talking about saving souls of, of priests and bishops and people who want to change things that from how they are to, to change them to what they want to suit their lifestyle. If you love someone and they're sinning, you need to help them, pray for them, tell them that they're in grave sin grave grave sin just because man is weak you can't say his weakness is okay you have to pray for him and help anyway thank you so much for listening may god bless you and heal you i'm sending you his peace in abundance may you always be happy and joyful in the lord and hopefully i'll get through the readings that i planned to do yesterday evening when i've done the meditations and then, who knows if I'll get tired this evening. God bless.